Welcome up. Today we're talking about the US elections. I know, I know, we have heard a lot about them, didn't we? But in this video I'm just making three considerations. This past weekend Joe Biden has been elected the 46th President of the United States. Some of you may have had an issue with electoral colleges, especially knowing that Biden has gathered 4 million votes more than Trump. This is because the United States are a federal entity where states are above individuals. If you're surprised, you may check this video on citizenship and the slow change in view in the relationship between citizens and states. In fact, the USA are more liberal than they are democratic. If you read the Federalist Papers written by Alexander Hamilton, James Madison and John Jay, you'll understand how the Founding Fathers were more concerned by building a system where powers were separated and institutions could check on and balance each other than by representation. In other words, the system of the US is closer to the philosophy of Montesquieu than it is to Rousseau. If you don't remember who is Montesquieu, check here. So whenever you argue that the USA is the prime example of democracy, well, not really. If the US would have been more democratic, Trump would have never won against Hillary Clinton, who got more votes, but less electors. The election of Joe Biden may have moved the compass needle more to the left in the political spectrum, but the Democratic Party really represents a wider amount of positions on different topics. The House of Representatives and the Senate are almost evenly representing Democrats and Republicans, proving how the US is still decisively oriented towards the right of the political spectrum. In light of this, Joe Biden won't have an easy job in the next four years of presidency. Again, this can avoid the tyranny of the majority, as Alexis de Tocqueville called it, but makes things slower and more difficult. On the international scale, Biden may be able to rejoin the Paris Agreement on Climate, and over time, the relationship with the European Union will be more relaxed. But the US won't change much their stance on many issues. These also explain the reluctance of Putin, Erdogan and Orban to congratulate with the newly elected president. While everybody around the world is crying over Biden's victory, I would like to take a step back on emotions. An American cognitive scientist, George Lakoff, in a book called Moral Politics, pointed out how Democrats and Republicans represent political positions as much as they represent different emotions. Democrats represent empathy, and this can be observed in the personality of Joe Biden, while Republicans represent fear. And this is clearly visible in Donald Trump, whose strong character is very much the symbol of a reaction of a scared nation. I won't bother by telling you that we must be absolutely rational while approaching politics. We all know that some degree of emotion is clearly unavoidable. But consider that tempered emotions leave space to rationality. And we all need leaders with some empathy if we want them to really care about their fellow citizens and other nations. Just before leaving, I'm giving you a few interesting and absolutely useless facts on how the US elections were received in Italy. Matteo Salvini, leader of the Italian far right, was called by the independent Trump's cheerleader, which is already delightful, except that some Italian newspapers didn't even know that cheerleader can be also male in the US. And so the translation was, you know, it seems like the next first lady Jill Biden has Sicilian origins, particularly from Messina. And her distant relative Caterina Giacoppo invited her to visit Sicily. I wouldn't suggest it just now because Sicily may enter full lockdown, you know. Finally, Libero, an Italian newspaper, is still as racist as ever as it defined the newly elected vice president Kamala Harris, mulatta, dark-skinned. But the real news here is that there is still people who read this trash. I'm understanding politics. Thank you for watching.